That any better? There we go. So um, I started making it easy to get pictures off camera phones. And rather than try and deal with like uh, you know text narration that was changing constantly, I just sent the team out with a bunch of camera phones to take pictures of the office. You could all see what we do all day. That's what'll be in the background. So I'm basically here because uh, a bunch of really nice guys over the course of the past year, I finally talked to them into giving me a couple million dollars to go hire really smart people like all of you to go build something awesome. And uh, so I'd love to get your resumes. I'd love to give you drink tickets for it. Come see me over there afterwards. But in the meantime, I'm going to tell you how I got from, hey, here's an the idea to where we are. Founding, funding startups. So a couple things I learned in the course of doing this, lots of wise information from other people. The first and most important thing is uh, when you're creating a startup, don't sweat what it is you're actually going to be doing just yet. You'll have plenty of time to figure that out. And it's going to change at least three times before you see a first thin dime come through the door. The first thing is the who. The second thing is the what. So who's going to be working on your startups? Friends are great, but remember you want to date up. You want to go find people who are smarter than you are. You want to find people who know their stuff better than you are. You want to find people who are complement to you, not who are clones of you. You want to put together that first, that one or two people, the people who are going to be devoting their lives to working with you. Those are the, that's going to be your team for the next who knows how long. And while it's great that you get along with them, it's all the more important that those are people who you are going to be able to build a business on top of. If you're engineering, they should be business. If you're finance, they should be development. Whatever it is that makes sense in your particular case. So the next thing is the idea. If you're here, you're probably Probably not somebody with a shortage of ideas. Lots has been written about this. You want something people want. You want something that makes money. All that good things. But you know what? It's not even worth worrying about because it's going to come in time. One of the things I learned very quickly is you need a space and you need time. So you're going to have to go figure out how to get yourself some time and some space to work on your idea. This isn't about spending an hour or two in your free time every evening going and banging away at a website. That's cool and it works for some people. But if you're serious and you want to make your dream come to life, you need to find a way to be able to invest real time and real energy with your co-founders. Now maybe you can make a virtual connection work. My experience was you want to be there in the flesh, huddled around a table, putting minds together, figuring out how this thing goes. So here's Dan's knowing absolutely nothing about what that idea is percolating in your head, here's my simple advice. Figure out a way that you, all the founders, can go without any salary for a year and scratch together 50 grand to figure out what it is you need to put together. Now, that's tricky and that's difficult, and I'll tell you in just a minute some of the tricks you can use to go make that happen. But if you're not there, if you can't go put your time and energy into your heart into it, run it as a hobby, work on it as a sidelight, but don't go putting your heart and soul into betting that this is the thing that's going to make it because you've got to have that time, you've got to have that headspace, you've got to have that energy to put into it to go make it sing. So let me talk about some of the ways that you can actually get some money out of your project. Now, it's really tempting to go say, I'm going to go find somebody else's money and use that to make my project work. And it's incredibly difficult. If you're blessed with family and friends who can help you out, by all means, take advantage. Sell your idea, sell your dream, make sure it's something you believe in, they believe in, go raise those family and friends' money and get started. If that's not the case, well, you know the typical approaches. You can find a day job that's going to help pay the bills while you get things done, and you can try and constrain that down. You can save up from what you're doing and try and make some time to have it happen that way. And then you can go to the pros. You can go to the angels, you can go to the VCs, and you can start asking for money. I'll just give you a quick summary of my experience in doing that. Angel money is available in smaller doses than VCs, but it is insanely difficult to convince these people that you're talking about their own money. VCs invest other people's money. It's insanely difficult to get them to write you a check. It's tons of time and energy. And if that's your plan, make sure you've got one person who that's their only job, because that's pretty much all they'll have time for. Maybe 50% best case. Angel fundraising is ridiculously time consuming. There's a bunch of people out here who've done it, and I know I know that these folks all know, uh, I'm looking at a few in particular, just how painful that can be. If you want to go VC, then you either, <laughs> just taking pictures of the office, uh, you either want to know somebody, you want to be in with them, they need to trust you, they need to work together, it helps if you founded a company before, and then they'll go write you a blank check to go pursue your dream, or you need to have somebody bet on. You've got to have the customers, you've got to have the vision, you've got to have the team, you've got to have that together. And that's where having that initial seed, that business that you've actually built something that they can bet on, not just a dream, comes in to be useful. The way we did it was we raised the family and friends money first, went full time, built on that for about six months, and then spent another six months doing uh, VC fundraising. I can tell you I did basically 50 plus percent of my time fundraising for the entirety of a year. That's my, like, my full time job. So it is really hard to get other people to put their money 
on the line. <laughs> think about who your co-founders are. Think if they can help invest. Yeah, we like Legos too. Uh, think about if they can help go put into that. Think about how you're going to go build a company can stretch and figure out what kind of money you need, who you want it from, and what your resources are for doing that. I think I'm out of time, but thank you very much. And here you go.